Ladies and gentlemen, Dusty Green in the building! Give me a hell yeah! Let's go! What up? How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Thanks for uh, for hanging out with us today. Uh, if you could, could you please uh, properly introduce yourself, let us know where in the bouts in the world you are, and plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, my name is Dusty Grant. I'm a, an acoustic singer-songwriter from Wichita, Kansas, soon to be a hard rocker from Wichita, Kansas. I got a new single that I've got recorded uh, with my band. Me and my buddy Jason Catlett wrote it. We're going to be releasing it very soon. We're headed up to St. Louis to shoot a video here in about a week. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be switching from a solo acoustic guy to hard rocker here real soon. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. What what caused the decision to do the 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 transition switch to hard rock? So, you know, I always kind of came up in rock and metal, um, you know, throughout my music career. And I, I honestly got sick of being in bands and with all the drama and stuff like that. Um, so I went solo and I just kind of I hustled for years and years and years. Um, and it was kind of a natural progression. I, I got invited to play a show, but they wanted me to have a band. So I reached out to some of my best friends here in town. They said yes. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. We started writing tunes together, playing shows and all that. And, oh. and here we are, me and uh, me and my guitar player, Jason Catlett. We, we wrote a song together and we're like, damn, dude, we got something here. So we're going to uh, we're going to explore that to the fullest extent that we possibly can. Is there is there any plans for maybe eventually because you kind of have like a country ish sound, particularly on this song, and then you're going the hard rock route. Is there any plans to maybe experiment even more and dabble in a couple other genres? Maybe it sees a lot of day. Maybe it doesn't. I think there will be. Yeah, we've already awesome. talked about it. You know, we've, we've got the hard rock stuff coming. Um, and that seems to be a really good fit for us. But Jason's a, a metal guy and I'm a metal guy too at heart. So we'll probably end up doing some heavier stuff. Um, I love country music, so we'll probably end up doing something country. You know, I still play acoustic. I still like to sing and I'll probably still do some acoustic gigs and stuff like that. But yeah, there's a, they're really the sky's the limit. Jason's a great writer. Um, and he and I have been super productive when we've gotten together. So it's been, uh, it's been good, man. I'm excited to see what happens. And when you say, when you say you're a metal guy, like just give me three metal bands that, that you think rock. I was going to ask that. Uh, my favorite band right now is probably Fit for an Autopsy. Okay. Um, I like Fit for an Autopsy. I like Whitechapel. I like Hatebreed. Um, those are probably the three, the three bands that I've been listening to the most lately. I've been spinning the hell out of the new Whitechapel record and the new, uh, the new Fit for an Autopsy record is, is fucking amazing. Yeah, so yeah they're they're brutal and there's no no letting off and i i definitely appreciate that <laughs> hell yeah uh lord i stole your question do you do you have another question you'd like to ask not off the top of my head you stole that one because i was gonna ask that you started i'm sorry i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> dusty but uh let's start off i have four you queued up uh and then we'll we'll we're gonna play a bunch of your stuff today but uh can you talk about this particular record uh, this song is a song I wrote for my wife, actually. You know, I'd done a bunch of really depressing stuff, and I've always written kind of like on the darker side of things. Um, and this is a song that I wrote for my wife, um, letting her know, because she's been, you know, being married to an independent guy that's traveling around and playing shows and doing all the stuff that I was doing. It was hard for her, and she was raising young kids. Um, so this was kind of a, a kind of a love story, kind of a tribute back to her. And that's, uh, that's really where this song this song spawned from. Hell yeah. We're hanging out with Dusty Grand. This one's called For You. That you're saying, like, basically, you're a metalhead at heart. Did you kind of just go the country route? Because I imagine people have told you, like, as a vocalist, you kind of have a natural country deep tone. And maybe you were steered that way? Or how did that go about going from metalhead <laughs> to picking up acoustic and singing like this? Uh, you know, I went acoustic just because I, at the time, I couldn't be in a band. You know, I, I had the, I had really young twins. Um, so I started, you know, my wife and I had twins and I started writing some tunes on my acoustic and stuff. And I'm like, if I want to play music, I can't expect anyone to try to live around my schedule right now, raising newborn twins, man. I mean, you can't be in a band. You can't expect people to schedule practice around your schedule. 
Um, so I, while the twins were sleeping or whatever, I was kind of writing. And I've always kind of been a grunge fan, you know. It started with like Alice in Chains and Nirvana and that kind of thing. That's one of my favorite eras of music. Um, but at the time, I was listening to a ton of like Whitey Morgan and Cody Jinks and stuff like that. Um, so it was just kind of influencing me a little bit more than I guess I realized at the time because I always thought it was more of like a rock sound. Um, but as I progressed, people, you know, people started saying that there was a little bit of a twang to it and it was a little bit more country influenced. And I'm like, well, I'm fine with that because I, you know, I love that style of music. But um, yeah, it, it just kind of it just kind of trickled in there as I as I explored that genre a little more and listened to more artists from that from that genre. Cool. Uh, Lloyd, did you have something queued up? Question wise. Well, other than everyone scheduling around your practices, you said, you know, raising the kids, you had to, you know, write at nighttime and stuff. Like how big of a transition was that for you? And, uh, how difficult was it to kind of like change your mindset? Cause if you write music all the time and then you start having kids, you're not able to, you know, really focus on that all the time. So how did you like overcome and adapt that? It's been a lot of like minor corrections, you know, going, going through the days and figuring out where I can make time for stuff. Um, you know, how can I fit this into my schedule? How can I fit this into my family schedule without completely, you know, neglecting my kids and stuff like that? Um, so I, I just tried to give myself, you know, little times each day, you know, where I would, where I would set it aside and be like, okay, regardless of what's going on, you know, if uh, given enough lead time, I can say, hey, I need one hour to work on this per day. The rest of the time, I'm dad. The rest of the time, I'm providing. The rest of the time, I'm putting food on the table. Um, the biggest transition for me mostly was I'd never really played guitar before um, until this project. You know, I, I kind of taught myself to play guitar and dabbled a little bit while I was in bands and stuff like that, but I never played guitar on stage or anything. Um, so just getting used to playing guitar, riding the riffs, trying to entertain a crowd as one guy, you know, where you're used to being up there with other people was probably the biggest, the biggest challenge I had. And I, you know, you're, the nerves for a solo acoustic show are just so much different than going up there with a band because you know the band kind of like they can kind of absorb the blow with you when you're up there alone with an acoustic there's just there's nowhere to hide you know there isn't nowhere to hide it's all on you so if something goes wrong just it's on it's you, on you. <laughs> you can't blame the bass player at all that's you it's your fault can you uh can you plug uh up from here like talk about this record and then we'll then we'll uh if you're down review some artists with us, do a little trivia and we'll have some fun. Okay, cool. Yeah. Up from here is a song that I wrote um, at the end of the first tour that I ever did. I fell asleep on an air mattress and that air mattress, I must've popped overnight or had, a, or had a leak in it. But I woke up at like, it was the last day of the, of the drum that we did. And I woke up and I was just sleeping basically on a wooden floor and I'm like, it's over. We're done. Like, this is the hardest this is the the hardest it's going to be like no matter what we do next time i have this experience now it's only up from here you know i and i i just kind of had that idea and i i just built off of that thinking you know it's kind of like the life of, of an independent artist you know you you grind and grind and grind and grind and you take a lot of shit and you get you get knocked down so many times over and over and over and if you're going to keep getting back up, you just, you have to love it and you have to stay positive and think like, you know, something's going to happen for me. I just need to keep making steps the right direction. And that's kind of what this song is about. I love about. that. I love that. Guys, if you could, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell just like I am right now so I don't miss anything when Dusty Grant drops it on YouTube. You. This one right here is called Up From Here. I like it a lot, and I like knowing the little mini backstory with the, the little comedy yeah, thrown in really regarding was. the mattress. That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that that song dude, that song was a juggernaut for me when I put it out. Um, it it caught on to all these playlists and all this other stuff, and I was like, you know, I woke up one day and noticed that you know I'm a guy that's used to you know your streams being what they are, and then one day I woke up and I was like, holy shit, that's got to be a mistake. You know, so I like refreshed Spotify and I'm like, oh man, I, I got, you know, I got on like the, um, you know, I got on a couple of editorial playlists or whatever and it started taking off. So I think that song's like over 76,000 streams now. So it's been a, it's nice. been a really good one for me for sure. Hell yeah, that's awesome. All right, so we're going to re review a couple artists. Uh, these are artists from 
Who knows where, of what genre, we have no idea. Lizzie, I am going to need that link from you now, whatever song that you needed us to hear. Uh, but first, we're going to go ahead and play... Let me scroll down for that one. Let's go ahead and do Left-Handed Cigarette. Left-Handed Cigarette from... By Bonsai Jax. Like, it's got, it's got the guitar on his back. He's on the bike. And then there's a tire. It's the perfect shot. It's the perfect shot. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, left-handed cigarette from Bonsai Jax. Dusty, what'd you think of that one? I think it's got a lot of different things in it. It's almost like kind of rapping with some heavy stuff. It's got like a little bit of a new metal vibe to it. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can dig it. Lloyd, what'd you think? I will yeah. It was different. I think you got just uh, just two yays, but um, okay. Let's queue up one more, and then we'll do some trivia. Let's do. Let's do. Uh, oh, is there a rating that I'm supposed to be giving, like a thumbs up, or a, what am I supposed to say if I like it or don't like? I don't just like it just, just as you did, I can. We can decipher if you like it or not based on that. See these guys. You're like, I gotta see these guys live right now. <laughs> now, just tell us yay or nay, thumbs up, thumbs down, or or just give us your opinion on the song. Um, trigger effect okay. those next. At Trigger Effect rocks. More yay to get in. Can they get it from Burns or Dusty? We'll find out. Whoever wants to go first. I give it a yay, man. It kind of gives me like a hell yeah type vibe. Oh, give yeah. That's, that's a good call. That's all you need. Hell yeah, I feel like didn't get at... I mean, they were big. Don't get it wrong. But they didn't get as big as I thought they should have been. Did you get that vibe from I them? I wonder why that is. Cause, I mean, like they had, they, they had the guys in there that knew how to push it. You know, maybe they just didn't want to spend the money on the on the radio push, or you know, who knows? I don't know. They, yeah, there's some stuff on the Hell Yeah put out that's super badass. I love that man. I, I don't know. That's weird. Um, I got to throw this one in here in a second. But first, Dusty, your trivia question is, and if you don't get it right, I'm going to give Chat a chance to get it. Whoever gets it first. And Lloyd, you can also guess it because I don't think you'll know this one. But you might. Whoever gets it gets a spin on the wheel. Here we go. Very few movies have been nominated for 11 Academy Awards. But believe it or not, this movie won all 11 Academy Awards it was nominated for. What is the movie? Titanic. That is not correct, but it's a great guess. It is a great guess. Lloyd, do you have a guess? No. <laughs> Heard. <laughs> I did not know the answer. And I've definitely seen the movie, but I had no idea it won that many. And it's catchy. It's got like a... Oh, are they compete? If they're competing against me, I'm just going to give them all a name. <laughs> there you go. Now you're thinking, dude. I'm, I'm just kidding. What? I'm not, I'm not that much of a... I guess, yeah. No, no I'm just kidding. Hey, Lord of the Rings was the answer we were looking for. Lord of the Rings Return of the King, which is the third Lord of the Rings movie, nominated for 11 Academy Awards, won all of them. I haven't seen any of them. Well, we call that a sweep at Academy Awards. Call that a sweep at Academy Awards. Silver ticket going out to... I didn't even see who it was. It was Mad Dog, I think, was first on it. Mad Dog. Silver ticket going to you, sir. Dusty, it's your turn to play and pick another song of yours, but it's your call. Whatever one you would like us to listen to. Uh, let's go with Through the Cracks. Through the Cracks heard. Guys, also, please go on Spotify. Hit the follow button for Dusty. That'd be awesome. This is Through the Cracks. Does anyone ever say that some songs have like a little bit of a stone sour vibe to you? Yeah, I've heard. I've I've had. Uh, I think somebody called me like the like the twangy Corey Taylor or something like that. Hey, like, I, that's I, awesome. I've had I've had, I've had, I've had wow. somebody say that before. Yeah, that's awesome. Which is Scum yeah, that one. That's probably the probably the darkest one I've put out yet. I, I've done a lot of that one. I was surprised, but it did significantly better than for you, which I thought for you would be a little bit more. I don't know, like more. Um, accessible i guess but through the cracks was pretty pretty brutal and honest and, and it, it seemed to do pretty well people seem to dig that so that's great with me yeah it's a banger uh we're gonna give you a chance to redeem yourself on this trivia here we go now this is an easy one lloyd you cannot answer i think it's an easy one 
When held to ultraviolet light, what animal's urine glows in the dark? Why the fuck would I know that? I wish I did know. You don't know that? To ultraviolet light, what animal's urine glows in the dark? Chad has already beaten you to it, but I just want to see if you know it. A stingray? I, fuck, I don't know. That's a crazy guess. <laughs> How would you hold a stingray's urine up to ultraviolet light, though? I don't know. Maybe you hold it out of the water. <laughs> I mean, you know, the reason I thought of that is I went canoeing in a uh, translucent fucking bay in Puerto Rico or down there. It was like one of the, like where you put the paddle in the water and the water glows. Okay, okay. Fish and stuff like that. So that's why I was thinking. I There's logic behind why you guessed it. I get it. Oh, for two. <laughs> I was like a oh, for two. That's okay. We got. So, we'll give you one. Guy you've ever had on the show. Not true. Not true. Well, we're gonna give Dusty one more shot at the wheel in about five minutes. <laughs> Silver ticket going to. Full frontal lobotomy. It says Drex gets a spin. I'm not sure why, but okay. Drex gets a spin. Well, I'm not sure why, but we're gonna give Drex the West Wolf a spin. Now I put it on country music for you, sir, by the way. Um, Drex, you just want a golden ticket. So if you know any artists that are awesome, that are local, or you happen to just want to put in your own music, let us know. We're going to put uh, that yourself or them into the next tournament of champions. Dusty, tell me when to stop. Stop. Hammer time. I feel like I've done this one before. <laughs> I have done that one before. Tell me to stop one more time. Stop. Okay. Surf wax. Never done that. Cool. Next one on the list is Kyle Gas. Wait a second. Kyle Gas. The Kyle Gas. Okay, Kyle is totally not local, but so he doesn't need our help. But it was kind of funny. Jacob threw it. Who posted that? <laughs> Jacob threw it in there. Oh. Slid one in there real quick. Uh, so next is Linda Claire. Ba and another Deftones esque style band, but they're awesome. Yes, I like them as well. Like good, they kind of remind me of garbage, like heavy garbage. Kind of, yeah. You remember that band, Garbage? I do. A little bit. I heard something about Garbage recently too, but I don't recall what it was. Dang! But they they got enough to get in already. Um, Drex, that's the song you want for the golden ticket. Okay, so you just golden ticketed. It's basically that's not really how it works, but. You just golden ticketed yourself into the next tournament of champions. So we'll use that song when it's time. So Dusty, gold, the golden are uh, basically like every, I don't know, like every month, month and a half, we we have like the winners of these streams plus people that have uh, won golden tickets on those wheel spins. We enter them into this tournament. We have one coming up on February 18th where half of them are people that have won, half of them are golden tickets, and they go, they battle it out to see who is the Tournament of Champions winner. Of which, nice. of which they are for sure going to win some prizes uh, this this go around. And uh, yeah, congratulations, dude. Uh, Dusty, I think we have time for one more, sir. Plus, uh, I have to ask okay. you one more question. What song would you like as the final song we hear of yours? Um, let's do All the Good Times. You got it. Who does your recordings? Who does your audio recordings? <laughs> I would say that was uh, pretty sweet. A guy named Chris Dawson. He's an awesome producer. He produces he produced Saul. He produced Any Given Sin, a bunch of, bunch of big rock bands. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, he, he was nailing it with the, uh, with the audio, the vocal stacks and harmonies right there. They were crispy yeah, and clean. He's pretty awesome, dude. I'm lucky, lucky to work with guys like that for sure. I see this is it. This is the easiest question I've asked you all day. Here we go. Who released the song Getting Jiggy With It? Will, Will Smith. Smith. Fuck. Will Smith is correct. 
one for three. All right, I have to turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll do that. I'll do that shortly here. Um, it's, it kind of is, it gets annoying, but it's fun at the same time. Poobies, poobies just <laughs> followed. Poo. Why is that name? Bees with four S's just Poo followed. Bees. So you're on the wheel also. So whoever follows today, uh, we spin this at the very end. They get a twenty dollars gift card to of their choosing. New follower day. <laughs> nice. Shout out to poobies. <laughs> Dusty, once again, if you could plug uh, anything that you'd like one more time, sir. And uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us, spending some time out of your day. Uh, also, last question really quick. What what can we expect from you the rest of 2022? Uh, I've got two singles recorded already, working on a third one. I'm going to go shoot a video and put the single and video out here in the spring. Um, hopefully book some shows for spring and summer and just kind of see what happens. We're going to put it out there and, and see how it's received. Um, I'm going to try to go big with it. So we'll see what happens. We'll, 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 I don't know. I got a lot riding on this one. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I hear that. Hell yes, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Dusty Grant, we appreciate you, sir. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, you're welcome back anytime. Dusty Grant, Hell everybody. Yeah. I appreciate Hell you guys. Yeah. Anytime you guys want to have me on, I'll send you up. You have a Thank you guys so much. Thank you, dude. Thank you, guys.